Hi, my name is Rubidium. Today we're going to look at object removal and content aware fill in DaVinci Resolve 16. A couple of months ago, uh, Adobe added content aware fill from Photoshop to After Effects, and uh, a lot of people did tutorials on how to get that happening and make it look good in After Effects, but if you're a Resolve-based operator, um, because Resolve is after all free, you can use exactly the same content-aware uh, object removal service inside Resolve. So we've got a couple of clips here. The first one is a girl on a skateboard. The second one is, I believe this is Egypt, flying over some ruins. So we're gonna add these to our timeline, change it to the same space, and then create a new timeline from those selected clips. Um, if I'm going quick, it's because I do this every single day. Now, here we are in our um, color panel. And what I want to do is get rid of this manhole cover um, that's really prominent, kind of distracts your eye from uh, this night nice skateboard work. So I don't want to do the whole thing for time. Go to my edit tab and I'll just hit W to cut this down. To a reasonable place but I want to show how you can even clip things as they go out of place so I'm gonna find a space where the manhole cover is visible clearly visible and then I'm gonna keep this as my basic grading node I'm gonna hit option s on my keyboard to create a serial node and then in this serial node I'm gonna to go to my shapes create a curve and draw around this manhole cover just this so that it's even on the same perspective. Then what I'm going to do is um, soften the outside by let's say 0.78. Okay, so now what I need to do is track this mask to the uh, manhole cover over the duration of the clip. So I'll go over to my tracking tab here. I'll track, hit this to track backwards and then I'll take the playhead back to where we started and I'll track forwards. And on my 2019 iMac, it's pretty quick. Now I'll add another serial node, another option S, and in this node, I'll do my object removal. The reason for working in sequential nodes is that I can turn them on and off to see what's happening and I can carry them over to different um, workflows. So in my third node, I have to connect the alpha from the second node. So I'm just gonna drag this little blue square to the little blue triangle. And you'll see now in my third node, I just have it. If I turn on my isolation, it's just isolating the manhole cover. I'm gonna open my open effects, search for object remove, put this down here so I can get to it. I've made my screen smaller so I can capture it. So it has to analyze the scene. It's going to analyze the background and find out what is going to work and what isn't going to work. So hit my scene analysis. Again, it goes through pretty quickly. I mean, we're, this is a 10 second clip. It's probably going to take us about 20 seconds or thereabouts to analyze. What it's doing is looking at my mask, the alpha, as it moves through the scene and what other information it can use to build um, our clean plate. Great. So now there is a hole in my scene, which I don't want, but I'll go back to somewhere here and then I just, I'll use the default settings for now and just hit build clean plate. And it has analyzed all the space around the plate and basically decided that, you know, and for the most part, it works really well. <laughs> right for here, it's a little bit sh shady. And then once I get to this part, as the light changes, as this flare comes through and changes on the um, background, it starts to get, really starts to fall apart. So I've got two choices. I can just use this part of the clip where it looks good and not worry about that bit. What I can do is as this starts to get a little crazy, I can go over to my timeline here and in corrector uh, three, add a dynamic keyframe and then as it changes color to here, what I'll just go in and is increase the brightness a little bit. The top end. 
Now it'll change color and be a lot less distracting. This actually works pretty well. So, you know, these, the computer artificial intelligence and all isn't a magic bullet, but you can work around it. And if this was, yeah, we see, start to see this line drift across. If this was a scene in a movie where your eye is now focused here, even when, though we're getting to this section there, you probably wouldn't notice this. I'd be, I'd, I'd put that in my film. So let's try something a little bit more demanding. Here we have um, a big shot of ruins in Egypt. I'm going to put this in a clip of a science fiction movie that no water exists in the future world. So I want to get rid of this little lake, this dam here. So again, let's shorten it for time so we're not here all day. I'll clip it here as we start to drift off and go back to color. And again, I'm going to option S to add a serial node. This time I'll just select my uh, default rectangle, adjust this to the inside of the dam. Again, I have to track it. So let's, where am I in the clip? I'm right at the end. Let's track backwards. Yeah, Resolve's tracker is pretty sophisticated and does a really good job. You don't have to go into Mocha or third party uh, plugin. And it's it moves a little bit, but stays with it pretty well. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to hit my option S again, connect my um, alpha channel. So it's showing up in my node back to open effects, put my object removal on. It'll have to run scene analysis here again. Now in most films, you would paint this out. A visual effects artist would come up with something that looked like this or copy it from over here. But what object removal is doing is basically doing that for you. It's it's being your visual effects artist. It's trying to come up with a, a better way of doing this automatically. So if I was going to paint out 20 different cars in this, I wouldn't have to do those sequentially. I would let the computer work out what I want to replace this space with. And there it is. I have my blank space. I'm going to scrub back and forth to make sure it stays in the right space. Uh, it's a little bit going over the edge here. Let's try it. So let's just try the default build clean plate. And it's done a pretty good job. It's pulled in, uh, you know, different elements from different places. And uh, apart from here where it goes a little off, um, it's done a pretty good job of, you know, building a, building a faux, uh, it looks not too dissimilar to these other places. We can change this to um, external and ask it to build another clean plate. It's not going to be that different and we can we can change how far it was it's going to go for the pieces it's going to get. So we could make this if we drive this search range up, it's going to build a clean plate from um, all over like up to 63 pixels outside. That actually looks a little better. Again, this is no substitute for a visual effects artist, you know, duplicating something over here and putting it in there. It's the computer doing its best guess for what could go here. And as you can see, it's, you know, it's, it just keeps guessing. So you can eventually just keep hitting it until you get the result you want. I'm, the only thing I'm concerned about is this blue lip here as we start to expose the dam. So what we'll do is we'll go down to our frame, which is sending the alpha through to this version. And I'll just drag this down a little. So when I go back to this guy, it seems to be doing great. So we'll go back to our fit frame, turn off our open effects, turn off our nodes, turn off our timeline. So you guys can see this semi full frame and right if you weren't looking up here to see that this is CG uh, you know you'd only get the sense that here's this beautiful ruined temple this can be really fun for painting out cars painting out people painting out um, construction equipment and again with our skater girl you know we're really not seeing this unless we're looking for it and then as it ends the clip we're adjusting things manually the only thing that's giving us away is this line. Then because we're on separate nodes here, we can always choose to turn this on or off to see what it is that we're doing. If this wasn't such a, um, you know, a different space, we could always turn our key down to blend it in or not blend it in. We can color grade that particular segment to be 
more green, brighter, darker, we can key that color. You see right at the end here, the, um, the color starts to change a little bit. But all in all, object removal is a really great tool uh, for people in DaVinci Resolve to get rid of those small little details that pull your eye away from where you want the viewer to be looking. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.